Okay, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Excel Cloud um, project presentation. In the morning, you had some presentations about what the cloud pl platform is. You have the entire community here that knows many things about cloud. I will not talk about cloud, but I will talk about cloud usage and the particular kind of application for cloud usages, which is 3D rendering. Um, so I'm uh, Marius Preda. I'm with uh, Institut Min Telecom here in France. And um, we also have Philippe from uh, CEA that is, uh, that is, um, will also present an application of 3D, 3D rendering. OK, so mainly I structured the presentation in four parts. I will give you some um, data about the project itself, because we are forced to talk about project. Then I will go in the subject, which is remote rendering principle and optimization. We'll talk about a remote rendering platform. It's something that is called middleware. And the funny part is the demo part. So we will show you videos and also how to connect to the platform and play some, play some games. OK, what is this project? You have here some data about the project. It's a project that we started two years ago. We are now in the third year, and we are almost at the end of the project. It's coordinated by Bull. You see the usual suspects there that are almost in all the French cloud projects. But you also see some new ones, uh, which are ATEM, TSP, meaning us, and CEOA, that are more on the application side. So the project itself had a goal to create the platform, but had a goal to use the platform in some let's say, um, non very use, uh, usual cloud application. You have all the data about the project here. The, the slides will be, will be available anyway. OK, as an objective uh, of the project was to establish the demonstration that we can use what is called high performance cloud computing, also known like interactive cloud, to run effectively applications that are compute intensive and that has some, have some particularities in terms of real time, in terms of load of the, of the cloud, and in terms of delivery. Uh, we focused from the beginning on games, 3D games, mainly because they are answering to all these uh, uh, constraints. But also, you will see an example of other kind of 3D applications, not as um, interactive as games, but still uh, uh, that needs real-time interactivity. OK, what the platform does, and this is my last slide about the platform, is a platform as a service that exposes the, the endpoint and the user interface that allows developers to manage uh, different software stacks. Um, then what is important, like any other cloud platform, is to easy to manage the entire application lifecycle, including resource provisioning, configuration management, and so on, and so on, and so on, things that you usually hear during the entire week. Then um, we have two software artifacts, an HPC uh, virtual cluster, and the one that is the today's topic, the remote rendering uh, virtual cluster. OK, so let me go in the main topic of the uh, talk today, the remote rendering. Do you know what the remote rendering is? Any of you used a remote rendering application? Any of you play games? <laughs> Good. OK, then we can talk together. You will understand. Uh, probably not easily. So if we take a game, that should be animated. It is not, but I will, I will try to animate it. OK, so we have a remote rendering means that you have a remote computation node, so you, which is called simply server. And you have a client that will receive the result of that cal calculation. So starting from a game, 
you have, we are talking mainly about 3D games. You have something that is called application engine, which is the game engine itself, and something that is called a rendering engine that uh, is interpreting the scene graph and produce the images, okay? Based on some local input, uh, which is uh, about the intelligence of the game data, scene description. All these, interpreted by the rendering engine, engine produce a picture, okay, is what we see. It can also produce something that is called a death map for 3D graphics games. Then, on a local game, when you have your game on a set, on a set, on a, on a console, you directly interact with this game engine and you directly see the result. In a remote rendering situation, you take the output, the video output, put it in a video encoder, compress the bitstream in a network packetizer, then stream, go into the network, and you deliver it to the gamer. But on the gamer side, you don't have the game anymore, but only a video player that is showing that image. If he's only showing the image, it's, it's, it's a YouTube, it's not a, it's not a real play. So this is why you capture the interactivity coming from the player in the video player directly, mouse and keyboard, and this goes back to our server through the network and is an input to the application engine itself, okay? What is in addition to the cl situ uh, classical situation is that the video encoder is coming into the schema and sends in real time all the frames encoded one by one to the end user that will uh, interact with the scene, okay? This scenario is not new. Some hotels years ago used to have this scenario. They have a data center in the basement and everybody in the room when they finish the work, work, play some games. Okay, so the situation here is, can we put this in on the cloud? We have, if you, if you want to take it as it is and put it on the cloud, you may have the chance to work if the cloud is near you. But in general, it doesn't work. It, at least you cannot guarantee that it will work because you have real time, you have network connection, and so on and so on. Okay, so this is what Excel Cloud proposed on, on this side, is try to help all these um, components to make it smaller to send. You remember we have to send the video to make it smaller. And to make it uh, smaller means also faster because you compress more, then you go on the on the network uh, faster. And a big part of the project was how to trick the system to achieve this. The, on our side, what we have is the cloud, which is a huge, powerful machine that is extensible to infinite. So you can do things. You can do other than only rendering. You can extract the death map and play with the death map. You can analyze the scene, and we will see later on how. Uh, you can even, instead of sending videos, you can even consider some object, some, some part of the scenes as 3D graphics objects that you send once, and on the other side, you recompose the scene by encoding 3D graphics objects. Even more, and I will go in details how we do that, you can watch, you can check what the user is doing. So it's something that we call region of attention. And since it's real time encoding, you can, with respect to what the user is doing in real time, you can put more or less um, data in some parts of the scene. You will see that that is the philosophy. In the real situation, it will be much simpler. Okay, some examples. Yeah, there are games, there are um, more um, medical, uh, medical um, uh, kind of applications where doctors should have access to high resolution uh, representation of things and for, for sure they don't have in all the hospitals uh, powerful 3D graphic cards and, and so on. Philip will also come back on this, on this. Okay, what is the problem that we have usually? This is a very 
illustrative uh, representation. It's not like that in the, in the real situation, but we may illustrate it simply saying that sometimes the, the video bitrate that you need is bigger than what the network can give you. Okay? What happens here, if you go simply on YouTube, you don't see it because usually the video players buffer a lot and uh, they, they predict where you, where you are. But in a real time situation, when you have to kill the other person in real time, you will see it. So what is happening? Usually the image is frozen. Nothing happened. The other will kill you and then you, you will lose. Mm -hmm. So the goal <coughs> and what the cloud can do is to reduce the video bitrate to keep it under the network bitrate, something like that. I would love to, to be able to do that. We will never do that. But it's, you, you, there, are, there are mechanisms that you can measure what happens in the network. And when you s predict some, some things that may happen, you go under. That, is, that would be brilliant. The problem is, if you do that, you will get this. Of course, you can control the video quality because you are in real time. You can trick your encoder to go as, uh, as low as you want. But you will get poor quality. For someone that will hack the game, maybe. But for someone that will pay the game, they will never pay for such a thing. It's just horrible. OK, so what, what is the problem that we, we want to solve? Um, and how we want to solve is to try to find some other representation meanings other than pixels or other, other than uniform pixels to go under the what we call the theoretical limit of the pixel space. We know that you can compress in pixel space, and we know that there is a limit that it depends on the, uh, on the resolution on the, and on the size of the image. So what can we do? And of course, what we have is the power of the cloud. So there are several things that we try to do. Is first to detect if there are some regions of interest in applications, and you will discover with me that uh, they are. Then to create some importance maps and concentrate the errors where people are not looking. Yeah, some, something like that. Then we should be able to correlate that importance map with something that we can verify easily in, in real time. Then we will go to the segmentation of the image. We build a hybrid space. We compress this hybrid space and deliver it and play it on the, on the other side. I will go one by one in, in all these, let's say in the more important ones. So the question is, what is the important information for the user? If I will show you these pictures, probably if you are a very um, advanced Doom player, you know or a very advanced your game player, you know what are the important features. But they depend on the game. It's not, not all the games have the same importance. And some games are indoor, some games are outdoor. Sometimes the killer is coming from here. You cannot say, oh, because it's small, it's not important. It, it, it's a lot on, on the game itself. OK, so what we did, we asked the user. Of course, the user is a player. It doesn't care about video coding. It doesn't care about, about uh, techniques. So you cannot just ask, and they will give you the answer. So what we did, we intensively asked them to play. They were very happy, especially my people, because usually they work, but here they had to play. Uh, so we had five players, two games, but it's extensible. And we had this piece of hardware and software, which is an eye tracker. Eye tracker tracks what you are looking on the, on the, on the screen. And they play it a lot. And surprisingly, we get this, which are nice pictures. And when the red is the point that is looked most, the blue are the points that they are not looked too much. OK? This is for Doom. This is for 0 AD is the, is, the, is the game. If you know more or less Doom, you understand that is the case. Because you have to kill someone that is almost here. Uh, everything happens more or less in this region. 0 AD, it happens here, but it also has some, some influence on the menu that you will have. OK, so we, uh, we construct this for one player. We construct for the, the second player, and so on. And we realize that this pattern is the same 
for all the players. Not the same for all the games, but the same for all the players. And we tried to somehow argument this uh, scientifically. So we compute all the correlations that are, that are possible to compute. You have here uh, for one player and different sessions. And we are co computing the correlation because you may say, OK, in this session, uh, he has a specific objective in the game. So probably it has a specific behavior. So we tried, we, we, we create several sessions. And we made a correlation between the same player playing different sessions. And we have a correlation which is very high. Uh, if you are going the, uh, more than 0 0.5, you already have a good correlation. So when you are more than 0 0.8, you really have something that happens there. OK, so we, we did that uh, for, for, all the, for all the sessions and all the tests. You, we may see that for DOOM, that is for DOOM, that is for 0 AD. The correlation is higher for DOOM. You also saw that the, the, um, the colored picture was very concentrated. For 0 AD, they are more erratic, but still very correlated. Then we also tried to see if between the players, their behavior is correlated. So actually, we took the, uh, the average, average DOOM 3, and we compute the correlation with respect to all the players and all the sessions. And we realized that the deviation is very small, the deviation between the average and all the, all the sets. So we may say based on numbers, that they are highly correlated. If they are highly correlated, what we can do? We can build a model per application. So DOOM comes with a model that is a simple model, because DOOM is a simple attention game, that will say, in this point, you will put a lot of quality. Here, you will put average quality. And here, you can really whatever do whatever you want. You will see that. We will not do whatever we want. But we can have less quality. That means the video that is sent here will be compressed much more than the others. Okay? And then we play with the distances, and we can have something that goes in real time and uh, show, show video. Another, another control that we may have, uh, and this is particular for outdoor, uh, outdoor games like this one, by exploiting the death map, we may say, uh, if it's far, is because the game designer will not put anything meaningful there. Yeah. In, usually, it works relatively well. And um, when the scenes are outdoor, it will, also, it will also save a lot of bandwidth. So that is just another hint how it can be controlled. OK. So we saw how we, we um, control the video quality. But it is, this is not enough. And this is why, because, why it's not enough, because you, uh, we will stay always in the pixel domain. So you can control, but, but still you have to send pixels. And what we add is a new representation method for the images, because of the power of the cloud, that will allow us to do a lot of image analysis that will segment the image in regions, saying in regions where we have a lot of details, we will keep pixel representation. In images where we have less details, we will just construct a polynomial surface, color surface, and send polynomial coefficients, which are very compact. <coughs> so illustrating this, we have the original image. We easily detect edges. That is a very fast operation. And we are saying these parts here don't, don't, don't have edges. Uh, doesn't, they, they don't have too many edges. So we can build a color surface. So we split the two modalities. That will go compressed at pi as pixels. And this will go compressed as polynomial coefficients. Very, very compact. And then the reconstructed image, you'd see no difference between them. OK? That's fine. Up to here, good. So this allows us to reduce a lot the, the data that we have, to, we have to. OK, now, it should be in, implemented in the, in the cloud. That means you have different clients, different sessions, 
different network configurations and so on. So, uh, so how it works, we have a lobby that is able to dispatch when, you, when, when a new client is connecting and we have the uh, agents that are responsible for the, for the remote rendering sessions. Uh, so we have a three layer structure, the cluster itself, the node and the application. And if I go in the details, there is a dialogue between them that is not very relevant. But what uh, it, it can also be shown here, you may have different applications that will expose the X server and that is going directly in the streaming, of course controlling the, the compression with respect to what go coming from the, from the client and uh, uh, mainly, let's say, relatively uh, classic lo load balancing between between the clients. Okay, there are several components that you need to, to set up if you want to do something similar. This is the library, the remote rendering library, then the graphic engine. Uh, if you go in the graphic engine itself, you will have much more benefit if you just capture the screen because you go in the, in the, um, uh, you may have information about what is relevant for the game you may have information about what are the objects uh, that you want to keep in, in pixel and what you want to uh, put in um, parametric mode and so on. You need an interaction module to take back the input from the, uh, from the user. Uh, we build all on Org, which is a 3D library, uh, game engine, open source game engine library, for which we create a remote rendering plugin and then video encoder and other streaming and the, and the agent. So more or less this is the list, the menu list of all the components. How it works, um, two uh, kind of, two, two cases. When the application is Ogre based, it goes to the Ogre uh, plugin. If the application is not Ogre based, then you go in the code of the application and you implement the remote rendering library Inside, inside that application. Both are streaming through the, the streamer and uh, takes the data from the video encoder. Okay, let me do some, okay, I am in time, more or less. Yes. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. So the situation here, we have four sessions. Uh, High resolution, it goes on uh, NVIDIA uh, K340 grid and with an Intel Xeon. And we will see what is happening when we play this. And we will not do load balancing and we will, when we will do load balancing. So this is the real, the real case setting. The clients are in uh, every, which is not far from here, but the um, game, is in Grenoble, which is relatively far, uh, in, at the bull premises. Okay, let me put that in full screen. And we are connecting the gamers one by one. So you have here some data about uh, what is happening. Uh, all of them sending interaction, all of them receiving their own video stream. So everybody is uh, is playing their own game, their own instance of the game. The, here you have some information about the node itself on the same rendering node. Um, they are playing in the browser because they only have a video encoder, or a video decoder and player. So you can have it on the tablet, you can have it on any device that is able to decode the video. Let's say it's not a traditional video because still you have to get back the interaction but for displaying itself is a, is a simple video. You can even use your phone to interact and your set-top box to, to display the video. Okay, so you have to look mainly at the FPS. In general, in games, you have FPS of 60. Uh, in video encoding, it doesn't make too much sense to put more than 24, 25 FPS per second. Yeah, in, 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 even in cinema, you have so we keep it at 25 frames per second for, because of the video encoder, not because of the rendering machine. But at 25, you play it, you play it very, 
uh, very good. So here we are in the situation. Uh, so the others will come. When you have one, for, of course, it will stay at a very good FPS. When you have two, it's same. But when you, uh, now it goes down, because the other is trying to connect. And when the third is connecting, even if he's doing not too much, the others comes to start to suffer. And um, they will not be happy if one of their friends will be, will be connected. So this will go, of course, when the fourth will enter, it will be even, uh, okay, let me move. Yeah, we have more or less 15, 12, but everybody's on the same level of not good. So if we are going now on the, with the load balancing, actually you just distribute on another node the new players when they are coming. We may ensure, uh, here it starts, okay, we have balancing the two sessions on the, so you have the first two are coming on the first node, the second and the, uh, the, the third and the fourth are coming on a new node, same machine, but another, another node. And let me go to speed it up. It is the same, the same play, but they will stay all of them at a very good uh, FPS. Okay, this also gives a hint about how how ready we are to put that on the market, and uh, the real hick is here. Because if usually, or if usually you, if you have only two players on one processing node, you really have to have a very good game that is sells very well. Uh, other, yeah, we are also taking the case of a 3D game that is a complex application. For some smaller, simpler, even 3D games, you may serve much more people with one server. But you also have to have in mind that uh, in a traditional approach of online games, where the server is just synchronizing the worlds of the gamers, uh, the threshold is something about 1,000 users per server. So when you talk with the game uh, industry and you tell them, OK, on one server we can deliver for 30, let's say, gamers, they will say, no, you, you didn't uh, understand well our industry. Okay, so some something that is happening, um, of course, where everybody uh, is playing at a certain moment. You have the FPS that is going down. You have the CPU that is that is going uh, uh, up. Uh, you have also the RAM. The RAM is relatively relatively stable. Uh, then we we also monitored um, each each core to see what is happening and we uh, realize that there is relatively easy manner to, to, to do the load balancing. Because you can predict in a very easy manner with respect to the application that the user starts, what is the impact. You know more, you, you can profile the application. And then simply when the FPS uh, starts to not be good, you just go on, on the other one. Okay, uh, that was on node, on the two nodes and of course, when you have two nodes, uh, the FPS, uh, you, when you have all on the single node, the FPS is going down. Otherwise, the FPS is staying at a, at a good value. Okay, I will stop here and Philippe will present you another use case using the same platform, but you will see that the requirements of the application are different and then we may have some time for concluding and for the questions. So I will start Philippe. So I'm Philippe Gravet from CEA. Um, I'm not an expert on cloud technology, even less than Marius. Uh, I'm mainly working uh, in uh, interactive simulation to say, explain briefly what it is. It's virtual reality for industrial applications. And I will focus my talk about um, our motivations for looking at cloud and what are the opportunities offered by cloud technologies for virtual reality? Interactive simulation is virtual reality, as I have said, for industrial application. It means that the images are not so important than in games. 
what we are doing is basically reproducing in a virtual world real situations. So what is very important is that the behavior of the virtual objects and the virtual humans or virtual animals are exactly similar than their behavior in the real world. So we focus on the accuracy of the simulation. I will briefly say a word about our research institute. We are in the field of technological research. We are not a fundamental research lab. We are not an industrial company. We are making a link between the two. So, interactive simulation. This is a short example of an interactive simulation session. We have a cable that is deformable and a human, a real human, will control a virtual arm that will apply forces on the virtual deformable cable. What is important is to capture the motions of a real human control the virtual arm, manage the contact between the virtual arm on the deformable cable, and manage the deformations of a cable. All this with physical meaning. I mean that the deformable cable is characterized by its physical parameters. Okay, very briefly, we are performing simulation in mechanics, mechanics of multi-body systems like robots with deformable parts. We are also simulating fluids. Uh, for this use case, it, will, it is interesting to notice that we also simulate dosimetric environment. You put someone in an environment with radiations and you see how many radiations he will receive. And we are doing that with um, different kind of interaction device, also with augmented reality and mixed reality, but I will go quickly on that. Our main applications are in the field of with the industry for virtual prototyping <coughs> and in training train people to perform their work properly or to avoid some particular hazards. And all this software is um, located in a, an, a physical engine that is called XDE, Extended Dynamic Engine, that provides all this kind of simulation. No. At the beginning of the Excel Cloud project, we were not very interested in the cloud. But looking at the possibility of remote rendering and access to high-performance computing capability, our interest was aware was uh, uh, higher. And we have our main motivation were those that are uh, provided here. First, the access to the HPC capabilities. Uh, when you simulate contacts, you can do that with a powerful PC, but it's sufficient to do that in real time. But if you want to simulate dosimetry or fluid dynamics, it's much more difficult. Our main problem is that we want high interactivity. And with the development that were detailed by Marius just before my talk, this is no a real possibility. Another important point for us, and we will see for our customer, is the ease of deployment. A simulation, what is difficult in a, sim in a simulation, it's mainly to set up the simulation, to, to get the proper data in the proper format, to perform, to apply the proper simulation algorithms. And we generally need complex and expensive software to do that. And finally, what we want to do since a long time is to perform collaborative working. Allow several people located in different places to interact with one unique digital model in real time. And this implies also scalability, but not scalability with respect 
to uh, the computing power, but rather with respect to the interaction devices. What we want is to allow one person working in a cave environment, a multi-screen system projecting several 3D images around him to work in collaboration with someone else working on a classical workstation and those two guys interacting with another person, for example, in an airport, interacting with his smartphone. So this is the kind of scalability we are looking for. And in the Excel Cloud project, we have proposed and we are managing two use cases. One for interactive small smoke simulation with silicon, but I will not develop this one. The second one is interventional radi radiology with a small company uh, named Esprimed. So interventional radiology, what is it? It's simply mixing surgery and radiology. A practitioner perform a surgical act, a minimally invasive procedure guided by X-ray images. The problem is that the patient and the surgeon are exposed to X-rays. And when you work eight hours a day in this environment, when you are a practitioner, it is a problem years after years. And it is becoming a worldwide issue raised by all the safety authorities. They want practitioners to adopt better procedures to protect themselves. The company we are working with in this project is Esprimed, who want to provide training sessions to train practitioners to protect them during radiological intervention. What they want to do at the beginning was to develop a virtual reality demonstrator where the radiologic system is simulated with all its motions where all the protecting screens that the practitioner used to protect him, and these screens are movable, may be configured. We want in this procedure, in this um, tool, to simulate the dose and define what dose is receiving the practitioner according to what he is doing and where his screens are located. And finally, we want to be able to replay the complete sequence to show him where he is good and where he is bad. So there's a rich interaction in this system because the, ideally, we would like to have a practitioner equipped with motion capture system or to act with a Kinect camera, but it is not really practical. So, the, the, the screen, the protection screens are controlled using a space mouse. The images are controlled using the mouse. And the practitioner will use all the controls that exist on his real machine. Pedals, um, touch keys, with the keyboards and uh, uh, some pedals added to the, to the system. And one of the problems is that this application is very computational intensive because we want to estimate the dose in real time. This short video shows what looks like the, um, the system. We can um, put a, a virtual sensor on several parts of the body of the practitioner but also of the patient. We may be interested, for example, on the dose received by the eyes because it may be important in the future. And here, according to the position of the screens, to what the machine is doing, we compute in real time the dose received by the practitioner here in his eyes. The system is much more complex, but you see with this video what is the, the basic idea. No. How is it implemented? And I would say a few things about what is for us very interesting in, in, in the cloud. This is the classical architecture of our application. We have several solvers, 
uh, I'm speaking of XDE, but in fact we have an XDE for fluid computation, an XDE for dosimetric computation, an XDE for human, virtual human uh, control. Uh, these are connected by Orocos, on Orocos middleware. We have several device drivers. Uh, the interaction uh, devices may be on haptic arm, a kind of robot that will make you feel the forces applied on some objects. It may be um, a Kinect, it may be a motion tracking system using cameras, and of course we have viewers, and happily for us, we, were we are using the same viewer than uh, Marius team, it's Og, and this is how our applications are working at the moment. What we are very interested in is to allow a flexible um, configuration of our application with different kind of configuration. If we want to make some uh, very difficult computation, we need a lot of computing power on these solvers, and we can imagine a kind of um, small Excel cloud configuration where only the solver is virtualized. Uh, using the development of Marius team, we can have um, a large Excel cloud configuration using the remote rendering layer, allowing the user to benefit from images and to send simple control uh, with a mouse, with a space mouse, a 3D mouse, and pedals, things like that. This is a more interesting configuration. And I repeat, we are, do not have the same problems uh, about the quality of images than in gaming. You have seen the images we provide to a practitioner are not um, photorealistic. And finally, we may imagine um, an extra large Excel cloud configuration where also, but this will be in the future, also device driver, advanced device driver will be virtualized and we may imagine a kind of remote interaction layer that will allow a person to interact with all this simulation environment using rather sophisticated tools like uh, haptic devices or motion capture systems like we, those we have seen on the first. To conclude, in this project we are developing a training tool for interventional radiology. The main motivation for the Esprimed company is the ease of deployment. They want to go to hospitals, to clinics, and to immediately, very quickly, very easily set up the training session. And the cloud is a very good option for that, using the computers available uh, in the hospital, in the clinics, and things like that. So we have what I call a business supported use case. This company considers that this tool will be successful only if they are able to deploy it using a cloud-like solution. So this is the main motivation, ease of deployment in hospital. And for us, as a research team, we think there is a very strong potential in the uh, technology developed in the Excel Cloud uh, project to open a path toward scalability, the kind of collaboration I have explained. Three people working with different systems ranging from a cave environment to a smartphone and collaborating, interacting around the same virtual model. So a path toward scalability and collaborative work. And this concludes uh, this part of the Excel Cloud presentation.